Well, hey there, guys. So in this tutorial, we're going to explore how to animate a painting using Photoshop to separate the painting into all of its layers, do the healing of the background layers, and then taking it to After Effects and putting it to a 3D camera system. In order to create this animated painting, we're going to go New File in Photoshop, choose Film and Video, and choose the HDTV right here. Create that. And that's going to get us our basic canvas setup. Now, these guides can be removed by just going to View, Guides, and Clear. Right? Because that's going to, because we chose video, it's going to give us those guides which represent action title safe. And just remember the general rule that is, if it's important information like text, title, or anything animated that is important, just keep it inside those grids. Now, we have to place embed our image. In the artistic comps, you see I created a folder for this animated painting, and this is the JPEG I'm going to animate. So I'm just going to place that in my file. Okay. And I'll scale it up. Remember, the general rule is you want to find as large a quality art as you can. All right? And when we place it like that, remember, it's going to place it as a smart object. A smart object is great because it's non-destructive editing. However, I want to edit it. So I'm going to right-click on it and rasterize it to get rid of that, and now it's no longer protected. So what do I have here that I want to work with? Well, let's see. I've got the original painting. And what I'm going to do here is also lock that original one and duplicate it. Unlocked. And that way, whatever changes I make to this layer, I have the back one there to line it up. And now it's just an issue of, well, cutting things up, removing them, right? So let's start with just this hat here. Okay, so what am I going to do with this hat? I'm just going to draw a little lasso around it. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste. And you see it copied and pasted on the same layer, but let's go ahead and hide that because now we've got to remove what's around this hat. And I can do that with things like the magic wand. I could use just a simple eraser. I can hit the plus or the shift button to keep adding to this selection until I have it all pretty much cleaned up. So I have everything selected, okay, but the hat. But remember, a good practice here is to use the select and mask tool. And what this does is this gives us a view of what we actually have selected as a black and white. And you see, because we use the magic wand, it gives me a very, very, very kind of checkered, right? Very pixelated, squared off selection. And that's just because it's selecting by pixels. But I can smooth that out here by adding a little bit of smoother factor. You see it goes through the pixels now. Maybe a little bit of a feather, just a tiny bit here. And I can also shift the edge in and out, and that will prevent it from giving me what's called that halo effect. So I now can hit OK, and I'm going to delete. And you see that now, by deselecting, I've got just the hat. The problem, of course, is now I need to hide the hat, because now I need to get rid of the hat on the background. And to do that, I'm going to borrow a little bit from the picture underneath it. And I'm going to use the clone stamp. Okay? Now you see the clone stamp paints with pixels from another part. Okay, so let me be on that correct layer. And what I need now is I need a section of cloud to paint over that hat. Let me make it a little bit smaller, a little more better. And the way this clone stamp tool works is by holding an alt, I can select, you see it gives me a little target, a little round target instead of a brush. And I'm gonna borrow right from this cloud down here, right here, and let uh, hold an alt and left click. And now you see it will bring up and let me paint. Now you see it actually went and grabbed that, eye, that, that uh, hourglass as well. Now that's not a big deal. And you see it gives me that little X, that little cross target that is basically letting me paint 
from another location to this location. I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. Let me move this out of the way. I kind of like the way this cloud on the bottom here is, so I'll select that. And you see, I've now cleaned up, get a little bit of this blue, and healed where that hat was. And that means now that, hey, I can animate that much easier because I don't have that hat there anymore. Now, obviously, because of time, I'm not going to do all these. Let's go ahead and turn the hat back on. Let's select the hourglass. And once again, if I need to correct a mistake, I can use these add or subtract from selection. That is the plus or minus or shift or alt. Go ahead and hit Command C to copy, Command V to paste. Hide that and do that process again of selecting, shift, or add. You see what happened there? When I helped it, it's actually selected too much of that. So this can actually be done by turning down the tolerance, and that way it'll select, see, only that bit of blue and white leach into my image here. So I'm going along here, it looks pretty good. Let's select a mask. So this process of what I'm doing here is essentially what you would do in the image manipulate photos apart. Let's let it load. Go ahead and add some smoother to it so it's no longer pixelated. A little bit of feather, a little bit of shift edge. And now I can delete that there. You have to deselect when you do that. And now it's time to Make the clouds cover this up. Again, clone scan. So I'm just borrowing a cloud from another part of the image. In a way, remove. Now, here's an issue or a problem I might have later on is I've got this jacket really close, right, to that hourglass. But watch what also I can do. I can, again, use my magic wand. Okay. Or the lasso tool. And basically now all I have selected is that section. Okay. Not the jacket, but only the section where that hourglass is. And let's go ahead and throw maybe piece of cloud from over here. And you see, I don't have to worry about where the jacket is because I have selected only that part there to restore and fix. Okay, and so you see I've got those pieces now. Okay, what about this guy here? So I'm just gonna kind of cross, select this. Again, I, I'm doing it in pieces here, so now I can just hit the add or shift. Added that selection to it. You're early. I'm early. It's 1.15. How am I early? Copy. Paste. Okay. So just catching you guys up here, what we're doing is we're taking a, a, a JPEG, a painting, a photograph, whatever, and learning how to animate it. I don't want that blue. Let me go ahead and knock this back up to 30. Uh, 
Python does a pretty good job of selecting what I want to select, which is the call behind him. I. What are you working on right now? Well, what we're doing today is I'm going to show you a little bit more of the artistic comp or ideas that you can do. And today I'm going to show you guys uh, how to make a painting come to life by separating it into all of its components and layers. So, again, it's just a little bit more of that artistic style. Right there. Okay, now, if by chance, you see I grabbed too much of his hand there, I could use the lasso with the subtract and say, subtract that section. Or I could say, add, and I could say, add that. Oops, that's going to be a subtract to... So we're just selecting sections. That looks pretty good now. Let's go back out. I've got pretty much all of that selected. Select a mask. That gives us the black and white version. Now, that's, of course, an adjustment. It doesn't by default. I have chosen that by the mode here. Okay. Right here in the view. I've chosen specifically black and white. Because you can see now that I've chosen black and white, you can see where I've got a little bit of oops. See, I've got some pixels out here that are kind of all off by themselves. But look at here. I can actually add, see, in this select and mask window. I can add to my selection. And then come here and again, smooth, feather, Shift edge. And that will allow me to, of course, delete all that extra edge. All right? So that looks good now. But then again, I need to come here now and eliminate what we have here. So this again is just using the clone stamp. And the correct layer. Okay? Now, this is also where, before I maybe may want to do that, I might want to come over here, and so I have a good, clean block, because see, it looks like it should be about right there. So you see, I'm just eliminating and erasing. It's a little bit offset there, but that's not that big of a deal. Gradually, you can see how we can get rid of most of that layer. So clone stamp is pretty neat and nifty. Of erasing. We're not really erasing here. We're just duplicate or cloning a section.
Now, I could also come in here, like I said, and clean this all up and get rid of it. Let me just, I'm just gonna do it a little more quicker and sloppier right now, just to get it done. I could even come here. Okay, let me go ahead. Um, I could even come, copy, paste, and come here and borrow a section like that. Just be sure, because when we copy and paste it, put it on a new layer, make sure you merge it back down to get rid of it. So I'm just going to leave that little schmutzy part there. I know it's going to take long to get it all, but... Get the idea. Going for it here. I'll be right back. All right. Not going anywhere. Clone stamping until I get rid of any evidence of that. I can quickly just kind of clean it up. In the end, what we're going to do is we're going to end up with all these different layers and assets. Okay, let me just zoom out a second. Okay, so you can see I got that done pretty quick and I can keep going, I can keep going, I can keep going. Let's go here now and take out this canvas here. Now this is a good case here with this artistic canvas because it doesn't, it has a lot of straight lines. I'm gonna go with the polygonal lasso tool. Okay, and that allows me to click and cut things out with more straight lines. Cut these things out in all their layers. See, I do have a logo there, so that means eventually I'm going to need to get a hold of a better looking logo than this, but right now I'm just going to cut right through it. I can also use the pen tool to do this. It gives very similar results. and just double click and you have it selected. Now, because I dealt with straight lines, I really don't need to select the mask and smooth it out because I'm going for straight lines and anyways. But I might want to add a little, little bit, of, a bit of shift edge there, again, so I don't get that hit that object. Oh, and I forgot to cut out the center of the, uh, that's okay. A little bit of feather maybe. 
a little bit of offset edge. Just, and now you see again, why did I have a copy of that? Because you see it pasted that way. I'm going to take it and overlay it where it needs to be. Right? Undo that layer. And now I can start to heal all of this. A little bit larger brush. Now, be wary that you can see this edge here is following a little bit of perspective shift. So, some of the lines may not be 100% accurate. The perfect world, I'd have much more time to do it. You can also see the sky is a little bit different colored there. Okay, the perspective lines are not properly done because I'm borrowing from here in the perfect world. You want to make that more accurate. Library layers again. Turn this on again because this canvas needs to be transparent. So let's do a quick watch this and just select. Oops, which layer am I on? Select the right layer. Okay. Turn down that tolerance. that. Whoops. Wrong one, right? I want to select inverse that. So now I have that selected, but I don't want to delete. I'm going to use an eraser just to get rid of it. So now we're looking through it. Whoops. So I can keep going here, I can keep going here. Oops, let's make sure we finish the bottom of this here. Again, it's a clone stamp. Alt select here. Actually, there. Okay, click. Let's click here. Click. Okay. That's so Eventually, I'm going to have this all chopped up and everything else. Now, I could keep going here and creating and cutting more out and more out and more out. But let's go ahead and find the logo that I overdid. Okay, so that's now hiding that, and that's now going to hide this one. Let me make the original visible. Let's just come here and choose ellipse. Uh, 
right? Oh, that's locked. Paste. And I could do the text, of course, here. Absolutely low consumption, the polo, blah, 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 blah. Or, right, I could just leave this as the original painting here, right? And don't forget to start EKG. Now, I'm going to do some adjustment to the background, of course, here, because I need to cut some of this other stuff out. So let's just grab the marquee tool here. Oops, that tool. Oh, let's go and use, actually use the polygonal lasso. Because the wall needs to be its own layer. And I'm going to do this really, really quickly here. At all right, I'm gonna do this quickly. Could be perfect. I'm just trying to get this done. What do I need to do? This I need to copy and paste this. Actually, let's go and so I copied it. Now let's do this. Select invert. Okay, that's everything. Copy. Select invert. Uh, paste. And keep track of everything. Okay, so that's now the wall. Again, why I'm using these layers to line it up. And watch how cool, because I used that there to create the wall. I'm going to select everything but that. Okay. So then remove. hide the original layer. There we go. So you see now what I've got is I've got let's call this sky instead of background. I've got wall. Okay. Hi Professor. Uh, I don't get is why you do the invert. Will you select this uh, and uh, you do the invert and also with the, the stamp. Uh, well, the drawing is then, what is well, the... You see here, if I make a selection, like if I, if I want to select this, it's a lot oh. easier to select nothing. So if I select nothing here, I then can select invert, and it selects what I, you know, it's a lot easier to select something if it's clean or it's simple. Oh, okay. So now that I've done this, let me just come in here really quickly here, right? And I'm just going to do a quick little cut out this bottle. Now it's interesting, pay attention here, you see that that cloud is actually in front of the bottle. So I might want to have just a few little clouds, or I could go find some video of clouds, right? So now I've got a layer of the bottle.
again, make sure you name appropriately here. Let's go ahead and just like we did before, I can select all the blue around that. Increase my tolerance. that when I did that, there are some sections here that got grabbed by accident. So I'm going to again switch. Right here, add selection, subtract selection. Year even, right? Or what you got and what you didn't get, do the select and mask, look at it in black and white form. A second. Pull up. And you can see, yes, I need to smooth it. Take a lot to smooth, a bit of feathering, a shifting of the edge. Let's go ahead and add that extra. Right, hide that bottle now. And now what do I need to do? I need to remove the bottle from the sky. That's what the clone stamp is for. The clone stamp, see, if you hover over the clone stamp, it will say, paints with pixels. All you have to do with the clone stamp, make sure I'm on the right layer again, is hold in the Alt key, and it gives me this little round, looks like a little target. And wherever I select now, it will bring that over to this section. And will allow me to remove it. So I'm literally painting with a brush size selection to get rid of that. Because we don't get to imagine if we're going to be moving a camera through these scene or we're going to animate something, right? We got to make sure that we've cleaned up and removed what it's going to be replacing. Now that I've done that, Now that I've done that, if I want to here, I could literally come here and kind of scale this up to fit the whole image. Or even select it like so. this kind of cup and deselect. So I've got my sky, I got the bottle, I got the wall. Remember, if I turn those on, you can see what we're going to do with that as far as building it in space. There's the bottle, there's the wall, there's the little logo, there's my easel, there's the guy separated, the hourglass, 
hat. Okay, so all the layers I've got separate. And I could even come in here and start doing things like animating some of the, the sand in there. I could always go back into Now, there's like a little thing here that's falling. Um, see, I almost want to come here. Watch this now. Let's go back to our wall. Again. So that every any little thing here can be animated. Let's copy and paste that. Call this something like. Again, get the clone stamp. Alt and click. I can wipe it right away. Obviously, I could even animate this little gas can falling, right? You see, once again, on the pump. All that's left over on it. And this is even a, a good way to think about removing the section of the wall here is instead of just delete. I can use just the eraser to erase the pieces. I want to take away. I'm taking away what I want to erase. And this again, it's such a tiny little element here. Yes, it's visible, but. Uh, Professor, when you use the eraser, it's not to erase all like transparent. Normally, I would use the brush. How you can use the eraser is not to uh, make like a, a transparent the background. Well, because I'm only erasing on the layer that I have selected. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's, it's only erasing on the one layer that I currently have selected. There are cases where you can erase by multiple layers. Sure. Watch this and we get really small. There's just one little detail here in the handle. Very small. All right. And you can see just how small that little thing is. But it's those subtle little things that we can animate, OK? So let's see, what do we got now? I've got the original painting I'm going to leave off. I'm going to leave the background. I really don't need the background anymore, so I could actually remove it. OK, so I have sky. Bottle. Now, what's going on down here? Hold on a second. Here, I'm trying to figure out why I got some wall visible there. Pump's done. Wall is there. Model. Sky. And so, ah, it's an easy. Okay. So let's do this then. And I'm just going to quickly just do an eraser just to click. Oh, 
Let's see, what is this? This is the logo. Power glass. And finally the hat. I'm going to put the logo up on the top layer. Go full screen to see what all we have. And so now you see I've been able to get to a point here. Whoops, turn my ball back on. All the different elements there that if I want to animate them, I want to cut them up and put them all on their own separate layer. That's the important part. All right. What do we do? Control S, save. Save as what? A PSD. Because what we've done is we created a Photoshop composition. PSD. And make sure again, you're saving all this into a common folder. Remember, After Effects does not embed anything into it. It only saves it as a compositional project. So if you send me the After Effects file, but you don't include your videos, you don't include your images, you don't include the PSDs, it will be empty on my end. You have to give me a video or the whole folder. Okay, and now I've got it here, and you see there's my PSD. Now let's jump on over here to After Effects. Okay, now, I don't need to make a new composition because the PSD I make is a composition. All I need to do is import. Import file. Okay, and let's see. Composition here. PSD. And remember the important thing here is not footage. Footage just means one layer, which defeats everything we just did. You want to do composition, retain layer size, or composition. The main difference between these is that if you import as composition, the anchor points for every single layer will be based upon the size of the entire composition, which is 1920 by 1080. If I import composition and say retain layer sizes, the anchor points will be centered onto the individual layer. So things like that little pump or the hat, hourglass or every layer will have its own anchor point center. So I'm, I like to use that one better. Let's go ahead and import. It's just going to double check. Yes, bring in the PSD. And you see now we have the folder with all the content, which I really rarely ever touch. I just need to double click the composition file and you see it had tossed it all in there. Let's turn this down to a quarter quality. Don't need it to be high quality. And every layer. Now, one thing I don't have here yet, though, is my size and length verification. So go to composition settings. Yes, it is animated painting. It is 1920, 1080, 2997 frames. And this is where I can figure out, you know, how long do I want this to be? I'll go 12 seconds for this. Well, actually, Let's go 15. We'll make it a 15 second, a half commercial, right? 15 seconds. Now, when you change something like that, you've got to make sure you come down and verify that, right? Your comp is at the beginning and the end here. Sometimes when you change length, it'll come like that, meaning you have to stretch it out full. All right. And for the sake of what we're doing here, I'm going to go ahead and activate the 3D button on all of these, okay? Now remember, the original painting is not visible yet. It's still hidden. Now, what am I gonna do here? Well, let's think about building this out as a 3D scene. How am I gonna do that? I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna activate the two camera system, see, two views. That gives me my front view or active camera view, which is perspective, and my right view here. Now my right, I'm gonna switch that to being the, uh, let's see, custom view one, we'll go with top right now, top down. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that black so you can actually see that. Right now, every layer is literally, I'm looking down on it. So on the down, there is no thickness, right? It's basically, they're all set up there. And a great way to kind of think about this as well is before I even get started, coming here and saying, hey, sky, 
Well, my sky, I want it to be back in Z. So I'm going to push it way back. Naturally, when you do that and you're pushing it back into space, you're getting an issue here where it got smaller. So we're going to want to come here and scale up so it fits the size of the composition. So, but look here, now you see just how far away it is from the other layers. Okay, that's sky. Now, let's come here and do bottle. Well, bottle needs to make the appear as if it's halfway back in there. Which again is going to need it to be scaled up to fit. And you see that bottle now is almost as far back as the sky, but much further back from, say, our foreground. Take our wall. We want a wall to be right here. I kind of like it right there, okay? In it, meaning it's, but maybe I'll put it just a little farther back. Remember, we're trying to create the illusion of distance here. that up. Whoops, somehow another got knocked. There we go. Come on. Just back with it. So we've got foreground, middle ground, Backgrounds. Now, this needs to be back near the wall, so you see I can put that right up against the wall. And then I'm going to use my perspective view here, because you can see we scaled up the wall how much? 150 at least. with this pump, put back what needs to be about. DB, can switch the temporary full quality to see where it needs to go. Like that. Okay. Now the easel. I'm going to make the easel and all the other P components here. That would be the hourglass, the guy uh, suit, and the hat. I'm going to make them be the same distance. Or maybe I'll push the easel back. Just but again, remember, I'm moving it in Z, which means it's going to be, need to be scaled up. All right. Now, Another great, great way to understand how this is, because you see I'm currently active default camera, is to go layer new camera, okay? And give it a name, my camera, right? So it, it stands up. It stands out against the other things. I'm gonna leave it at 50 millimeters and do all this other stuff. I'm not gonna, depth of view is enabled, that's okay. Oops, someone just pinged in. Hold on. All right. There's something wrong? No, I just thought someone pinged in. But they had permissions. All right, so now that I created my camera, you see, active camera, my camera. All right? I can actually now come here to this top here, okay? and change this to do to default. Now, why did I switch to default? And that's because my camera is the camera I'm going to use. But I switched here to default because I wanted to show you here with the tumble, the orbit around tumble, what this all looks like. Okay? In the sense that 
You see here, if I tumble, that you can see the distance of things. You see how we can see the perspective and how things are stacked up in distance. And so you can create elements and layers that way, where I could, you know, select a, a layer and say, you know what, that hourglass, maybe I should have that closer to the camera, okay? And remember, we also have these navigational tools, for things like move, scale, rotate, that changes our little, our little, uh, uh, gizmo. Now, before I animate individual things, I'm going to animate a camera just kind of moving and pushing through all of this. But to best do that, let's switch now from default back to top. Okay. Find my camera, go to the beginning of my time here, see that? And say, okay, I want my camera to start at this position point of interest and position. And let's go here to the end. Let's go ahead and move it, and you see we're not going to fly through it all. Okay. Once again, I could navigate it by under cursor, pan. Humble even here. Oops, that's too much. Okay, you see they're now going to fly through the painting. Maybe I'll have some fun here and say, you know, initially, let's go a little bit as we go in here, a little bit pushed to the left. Oops, that's too much. Right, because I don't want to see the edge. All right, let's head on here. I have to push a little bit to the right. Fly through that easel. Let's go ahead and select all these keys now and do a quick little F9 so they get ease in, ease out functions. Let's go back to my one view. Right? This is my, my camera, the one I created. This bar to see it in action. Let's turn this bound down to quarter. And you see it plays much quicker because I switched to quarter quality. And now I'm kind of flying through the painting. And you're seeing you're getting what's called the parallax effect. That's where things that are closer to the camera move quicker than things that are farther away from the camera. And by doing all that, I start to realize now, yeah, my sky in the back is too high. Right? I don't see any of that water effect. I'm finding that that camera's moving a little too quickly for my taste. Let's move it back in time. Let's take a look at the sky here. Move it up so I can see a little bit more water, especially when I go past the wall. And that tells me almost that this bottle, this bottle, and we come down a little bit more. And I'm going to scale it up a little bit more. I just want to see it through the painting. See, now you can see it through the painting, the opening in our painting. Well, quite frankly, what it means is it needs to be pushed back further. Just make 
sure it doesn't go so far that it goes through the other side of the, of the sky. And this is also could be uh, uh, fixed by you know, maybe moving the easel over a little bit more. Okay, maybe, maybe moving some of these other guys in. All right, let's go ahead and Control S and save. And again, I'm just going to save this as. So all I've done right now, again, is just animate it to a point where we're moving camera through all these individual 3D layers here. Okay. And let it start here, let it play, and you see how we're moving in 3D space. Things that are further away are moving less than things that are closer to the camera. Now we can really start to animate this quite a bit. Okay, so let's start with, I like to work back to front sometimes. So I'm just going to give myself the sky here, give it an initial beginning. Okay. Now I'm moving the whole sky in the water. In the real world, you probably would just want to animate some clouds. Okay, I'm going to key that position over the end. And animate it moving from one side to the other. Just to give some illusion of movement there. Now, as we animate, the sky is moving, the clouds are moving. From left, or right to left. not very quickly. Okay. Now what can we move? Okay, so sky's kind of done. Let's go here. You know, the bottle. Couldn't move the bottle or animate the bottle. I'm trying to think it's a ship in a bottle. I don't know if we do Oh, you know what we could do? Now that I've done that. Okay. Now with the bottle, obviously, if we want it to actually work, bottle could definitely use a little reflection on, you see I got a little shadow there, that's just naturally in the image, but what if I wanted to give the illusion of some reflection, okay, well, that's just duplicating it, but then I need to change the position, and to do that work, okay, I'm going to change the anchor point so that it is at the base, I can rotate on the X. Okay, so now it's rotating on the X until I get it to just be a little bit of a bottle. Let's go ahead and position it down so it's based at the bottom of the bottle. So this is very similar to the way I did a lot of like um, drop shadows and stuff like that. I can even scale it. The problem, of course, is that it's full visibility. So let's change the opacity. Okay, so it's there, but not really there. And to really make it kind of come to life here, I'm going to go ahead and add a distort of ripple. Let's see. There's my ripple. Ripple, 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 ripple. Ripple. And that effect means it'll actually animate the reflection so that. Zoom in a little bit here. Get in there. It'll animate the reflection to give the appearance that the water is moving. I just need to set the controls. Ripple phase. Key that. And here, and just give it a value. I don't want it to be too fast. 
Ayo. Second, let's double check the parameters for this repo. Increase the radius, maybe. Wave speed. Right. Change the height. Change the width. Put the center right on it. Now you can see it actually distorts. You see that? It actually ripples. You don't notice it much, but it's a little bit of extra stuff there. Very cool. All right. Now what? Let's get to that pump again. One thing that works really good here sometimes, guys, is if you double click on the layer, okay, you see what it gives me here? But sometimes that can be easier to do than, um, have to zoom in really closely and get a look at what this is. Now, how am I going to animate that pump? That little tiny pump. Let's see, where is it? I'm at the beginning here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the puppet warp. Okay, and that means that I'm going to select, show the mesh. You see it has it selected now. Okay, pin, pin, pin. And how am I going to animate this? Remember, we can come here and say record options, which basically says hold control. Okay. Now I'm going to come here too, and I'm going to say uh, show mesh speed 50%, just to lower it down a little bit. But I hold control, and I'm just going to click on this pump. And I'm just going to swing this back and forth just a few times. Back to center. Now that gave me enough keys on that animated pin warp to find the deform, to find what I moved. You see it right there. Okay. Now I might stretch this out just a little bit more. They seem to be a little bit too close together. But then I can copy, paste, copy, paste, paste, until I get the animation to cycle. Of course, you notice there's keys here on this pump when it's not even visible anymore. Right? So just be aware that you only need it to animate and move when you see it animating and moving. I could do the similar thing with this guy in the jacket, right? Or the guy in the suit here. Okay, so let's have make sure he's selected. Suit. Okay. Now, what do I want to move and what don't I want to move? If I don't want his lower extremities to move here, I'm going to put a pin and say lock those down. And then I can put a pin right there and again, holding control to record. Let's see here. Record options. Speed, moving, let's say 50, okay, I'm going to hold control to record it, and I'm just going to have this guy kind of animate, walk back and forth. Some keys in there. Let's find those keys, mesh, 
form. Puppet warp. So you see I have him just moving a little bit like that. Maybe I'll come here and instead of recording, I'll just physically do it. Going back. Go ahead and select those keys. Copy. Paste. Now rocking back and forth. And remember, I only need those keys as long as he is visible in the scene. So if he's not visible, I don't need to add more keys. Let's go ahead, F9 them to make them easy ease. And I should have done that as well with the uh, little pump. What else can we do? Like I said, I've got the hourglass. I've got the hat. Hey, okay, let's go to the hourglass. Okay, now it's mostly visible in the beginning here. But maybe what I'll do is say, right here, eight. Okay. That's where I want this to be. So I'll key the position. And I'm also going to key the Z rotation. allow me to go to the beginning here, give it some rotations, like four, and nine, oops, to get the ease and ease out. Okay, I'm going to key, let's see, let's key position here again. Then at the beginning, maybe I'll have the hourglass. Whoops, something just went to this. Bit. There we go. At the very beginning, maybe I'll have this all right zoom. Stop going crazy on me. Apparently, my mouse cursor is set to high sensitivity. Or so. Let's have this start. Okay, so now my hourglass is animated. And the hat, Let's say the hat comes in. There, hat, transform, position, and I'll have that animate uh, up in the air. No, nope. air, come on, hat, where are you? Okay, and that's just going to animate down. Now, right now I don't have anything like motion blur or any on, on these, but I can quickly just add them here, especially if it has any kind of movement to it. Okay, so let's get that going. Now, what could remain? What could I do? Well, give it a function, give it a purpose, because right now you see it's basically just animating in. And what's going to give it a function and purpose? Well, a logo. Now, the logo where it exists in the ad, because this was just a painting for an advertisement, was all the way at the bottom. Well, I should have that logo dead center for some reason. need to remember turn on action title safe this will give you a heads up display of where center is sir does the image have to be a advertisement no it, it can be anything you want but oftentimes the 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 
the game breaker, the game changer here is when you give it a purpose. Mm -hmm. As in, it's not just me animating stuff randomly. Because then that's art. Right? Okay. That's, so give it like a focal point. Yeah, if you give it something with a purpose, suddenly now it's no longer art. Now it's design. Now it's stuff that you can sell. You know, uh, mm -hmm. recreating this for somebody. Now, how do I want this logo to animate? Okay, so maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Now, just be careful. Remember, it's going to be poor quality because it started as poor quality. Right? Even if I go full quality, it's not that bad, actually. Or I could find this and animate it. I could take it in Adobe Illustrator, break it up to pieces, convert it to shiny chrome like I've showed you before with reflections and lighting. But I'm going to keep it kind of stupid and simple here. Maybe I'll go to four. Okay. And at four, maybe I'll do a position and I'll do a... Uh, 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 see here... Do a position Go to here. Maybe give it a rotate Y. Go up in time. Have it fly down from the top of the, the screen. Much like that. Or maybe I'll have it fly up from the bottom since I already have some stuff flying in here. It's off screen. We just gotta kind of double check that. Alright. Just on the edge. Okay. And then I'm gonna give it a mount of rotation. So maybe I'll have it rotate negative four. And it's, remember? Easy ease. Let's make those keys look better. And I got my logo coming in comes to a stop here. Now just be aware it isn't full 3D. It doesn't have any thickness to it all. And eventually I'm going to end up probably flying right through it. See that? So maybe right about here. I'm going to key the position again have it fly at the camera, not away from it, but towards the camera, which would be a negative 100, negative 1,000. Remember, I could always switch to a top-down view to know exactly where it is in relation to my camera. And also, as do, I'm doing that to make it fly towards the camera, I'm going to go ahead and key its opacity shift so it slowly disappears. Because I don't want it blocking my view when I come really close up now because it's literally right in front of my camera. What's left? What do we have left here? Well, what we have left here, of course, is the slogan. Now, that's why I brought in the original here. Because the slogan, let me move that all the way to the top here. Okay. And it is not um, 3D. Okay. In fact, it's not really showing me there, so I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to use my PSD file here. I want to get, I'm going to use the animatable text built in After Effects. You're not really happy with Photoshop. Not happy with me. Photoshop is locked up. All right. There's got to be an alternative way to get this. Come on. Uh, Go. So let's just come to the camera. 
to the text tool, click center here, and what goes in the text. All right, so what I was able to do, of course, is just look at the image there, and I was able to get the absurdly low consumption, the polo blue motion text. Okay, just wanted to get that so I could actually read it, and then I just used the type tool. And remember, the type tool in After Effects has many advantages. If I would have just done that inside of Photoshop, I can't use a lot of the pre-made animation elements. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here now with it selected and finding a location here of where I want it to animate on screen, go to my effects and presets, let them load, go to animation presets, go to text, and now, how do I want this to animate onto the screen? Okay, so I can animate in, I can do blurs, I do curves and spins, I can do graphical, I can do things like animate in, it's gonna have things like typewriter or spin in, decoder character. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find fade up words, fly in from the bottom, fly in with a twist. And let's see here, random file, random shuffle in, slide and pop, all these are options for smooth spin in by word. Maybe I'll do a spin in by word, having it start right there. Now of course, you see it is spinning in by word, but you see they're starting down here. See, they're not actually off screen. So what I have to do is go into the character elements there of the text, of the animator it added. And you see it has an initial position. Well, the initial position, I'm gonna have it centered. Like that. But I'm gonna have it spin in from way off screen. So each, you can also see if I open that up, I can get a hold of the keyframes there. So I can do things like F9. And so these characters are going to spin in from the bottom, find their location. Now that did not give me the right keyframes. Let's see. The proper initial setting. Maybe it didn't like that key. What happened? Hmm, for some reason. Did not do the right one. See, now they're animating all over the place. New, new change text, right size. Uh, I don't know what they meant. It's my text. I'm going to do a new text layer. That one did not work right. Fortunately, all I have to do here is... Paste. I see what happened here. It put it on the wrong layer. Let's make it all 
all the way to the front. Why it's not giving you the correct text layer? What is going on? Why is it hidden? Very bizarre. All right, let's just keep it simple. And I'll just say something like this. Uh, the blue, I'm trying to remember what it was called. For some reason, my text is not typing. Why is my text working? Black. All right. Anyways, I, I wanted it to kind of get to a point here where it actually was giving me the text, but it's not, still not giving me any text here. Very, very bizarre. Fill, size, that all looks good. All right, so it's not working with the text here. Not a big deal. But in a real world, I probably would want to do that. In fact, this might even be the best thing to do is new composition it, right? Because this composition's getting really thick and heavy. And then come here. There. That's all I needed to do, right? Just put it in its own composition and say, okay, maybe I want it to do what I wanted to do there. So let's put it there. Let's do in spin in by word. Okay, this gives me now the power of controlling it here. Say, I want it to be off screen. Okay. And I can control it much easier here in its own composition. Okay, just like that. I don't really like actually spinning my word. It doesn't really. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. And let's go ahead and add the motion blur to it. Okay. But because I did it in its own compositional layer here, right? There, all I gotta do is go to my project folder, find that comp one, I can even right click and rename it, right? Animated text. Drag that now on top of the comp for our animated painting. And it's gonna do everything I need there Okay. I still just don't know why it's not showing up. Is that because it's not 3D? Ah, voila. Hey. Okay. Now the other thing I'm noticing here is my camera. Ah, somehow I got changed to the front view. That's why it is not working, see? My camera. Now I've got that in its own layer. I gotta make sure that it's scaled properly. So, Time it out at some point here, so it's actually working with my logo. So maybe I'll have it come in a little bit later. Right there. There we go. That's what I want. I didn't want it to be in 3D. I want it to be dead center. Come in right there. 
animate itself on screen. Right? Just like so. And then I need it to fade away or do something like that so I can either use an animate out. I like the blur. I really like this blur. Let me just do an evaporate. You see, that did not work on the composition here. I have to do it here. And there it evaporates. Sometimes you need to put a few extra keys in there for like opacity. To have it fly, fade away. All right, so it fades away at the very end. Last but not least then, what else does it do now? Well, the last thing I'm gonna do here is go to a new composition, give it a name, output, right? And now I can take the animated painting composition into here, and the last thing I'm gonna do is just play around with some things here, like a fade up of opacity. So it doesn't just immediately appear, it's gonna fade up. I can go and get some audio. I can even get some additional effects, like using the uh, uh, story block videos or something like that, where it can get into some detail there of like maybe having some fog or some other environmentals or something like that, some sound effects, all that can kind of be played into it. But now that we've got that done, let's just do one list, control S, let's go ahead and export. Add to the media encoder queue. Remember, the After Effects file has nothing inside of it. It looks like it does, and actually it does, it does it in the text, that's it. Everything else is a link from a PSD file. So if I, you deliver it as an After Effects file, but you don't give me all the folder with all the PSD and all the content, that will be empty when I open up that After Effects file. So that's why we output it. You have to assume that whenever you're using these Adobe packages like that, that the client or the, that you're working with doesn't have Adobe. So they, they can't even do anything with an After Effects file. We get the encoder working here. Once again, this is also another little shortcut here that we can do is before I even encode it, go ahead now that I'm done and purge all memory and disk cache. See, it's 1.4 gigabytes. I did that on a little break there and it actually was 16 gigabytes. So no wonder it was not performing well. The video I was recording, all my extra memory was gone and so we can do that. Here in Media Encoder, we have to wait for it to make its connection. Or if I want to, I could just load it by hitting plus and then finding the correct composition that I want to output. There it is. Hit the H.264 option to verify that it is now going to be the correct video codec. I can come over here and double check the size of things. It is H.264, preset is high quality. Now I'm gonna choose a slightly lower quality here just because I know I want it to, it's gonna be a pretty big file, okay? And it's gonna take a while because of all those keyframes and moving cameras. Finally, I do an output. So I'm just doing it as a YouTube 1080. Painting, put your last name to it. I could do a stick, I could call it whatever assignment it is. I'm just gonna leave it as animating painting. Hit OK. And finally, come over here and do the green arrow to encode it. Now let's see just how long it's gonna tell me here. Because this is something a lot of students are starting to realize is that, wow, it tells me one thing, but it takes a long time. And that's because we're 
every keyframe, every effect, every filter, um, turning on 3D space, if I added reflections and shadows and all that stuff, all that adds to the length of time it takes to render. And so that's why sometimes it's almost best to work in little bits and pieces, finish it, and then bring it all back together when it's all ready to just kind of composite and edit together.